in most macroeconomic models, for an economy to grow, it must save and invest. By foregoing current consumption, our economy savings can be used for private investment. Investment as the capital stock of the economy, which, aside from changes to employment levels or technology, is another way to achieve real economic growth. Remember the production possibilities curve. In this case, by sacrificing some current consumption to invest in adding capital stock to our economy, we know that in a few years, assuming exponential growth, we'll be able to consume even more than we can today. That's why investment is important. If you'd like to consume, you got to save now to invest in having more later. Investment in the macro economy can take one of four broad forms. Non-residential structures, residential equipment and software, residential and private inventory changes. All of these are part of what we consider the stock of capital in the economy. Some investment is made to replace the capital stock that we've already used, which we describe as depreciation. All capital depreciates, whether it's your laptop, car, or home, it all depreciates due to wear and tear and exposure and needs to be replaced. The investment in the economy above what's necessary to replace depreciated stock is called net private domestic investment, or NPDI. Both investment to replace consumed capital and net private domestic investment make up gross private domestic investment, or GPDI. While consumption makes up 70% of the U.S. economy, most of the volatility in the economy is driven by changes in private domestic investment, with investment declining substantially during economic downturns. That lost investment represents a lost opportunity to grow the economy and is precisely why some downturns can permanently change the future trajectory of the economy. But how do we determine how much investment will occur in the economy? The market for investments can be graphically represented with an investment demand curve. Like most demand curves, it's downward sloping, representing a negative relationship between interest rates and investment activity. The higher the interest rate, the less investment will be demanded. That's not to say interest rates are the only thing determining how much we invest in the economy. Exogenous factors like expectations about the future of the economy, the pre-existing stock of capital, capacity utilization, the cost of competing capital goods and other factors of production, public policy, technology, and even the size of the economy itself plays a role in determining how much investment will occur at any given rate of interest. You might be asking, where is the supply curve? In the investment market, the demand for investments is similar to the demand for money, in that both have a negative relationship to interest rates. In the money market, the supply curve is the money supply, as determined by the central bank and the economy. For the U.S., that's the Fed. Similarly, in the investment market, more advanced macroeconomic classes will teach the supply of national savings as the complementing supply curve for the investment market. In that case, national savings would be positively related to investment, so that more savings would be provided when interest rates are higher. Makes sense if investments are related to our ability to forego current consumption and thereby save. But your textbook ignores this, largely because the full model of the investment market often called the goods market, is much harder to understand in an open economy that includes net exports. In that case, the savings from abroad mess with how the model finds equilibrium, and it just makes it very challenging to understand. Any movement along the investment demand curve caused by a change in interest rates will result in a change in investment demand, which translates to aggregate supply, aggregate demand, or ASAD model, as shifting of the AD curve. You can imagine how this works with monetary policy. If the Fed wants to enact uh, expansionary policy to stimulate the economy, they'll buy bonds, which adds reserves to the banking system and shifts the demand curve for bonds to the right, raising the price of the bonds, and which, along with the extra reserves in the banking system, pushes down the interest rates. Those lower interest rates stimulate investment demand, which, alongside more household spending from consumers, who will be saving less because the interest rates are lower and spending more, that both 
both those things shift the AD curve to the right, increasing real GDP and raising inflation if no other changes occur. But this component is a special, remember. Our investment changes our stock of capital and may add to it if our spending is above the value of depreciated capital. So as the AD curve shifts to the right, understand that the long-run aggregate supply or LRAS curve may shift to the right too.